So Palantir has been on a great run over the past few months, just pushing right through every resistance on its way to higher highs with no end in sight. But is it overheated, overbought, and overvalued and is doomed to pull back? Or is any pullback that we see just a breather on the way to 40 or even $55 and beyond like some are starting to say out there? So let's explore that bull case for Palantir specifically, get you guys answers to those questions, and I'll let you know exactly where the stock falls out in the end. Just make sure you like the video if you like getting the truth without the hype. Now we have seen explosive move up once again, just like we kind of got there at the beginning of the year. We kind of pushed ourselves right up to that $20 mark, no problem. And now we just busted right past $25 and it just seems to be a freight train moving forward. But let's go over the three big bull points for Palantir and I'll let you guys know, you know, truth about the hype here is something like 40 or even $55 and beyond reasonable or is kind of the exact opposite true. And we're looking at dumping back down under $20 once again. And I'll let you know exactly where I think it ends up by the end of the year to kind of answer those questions there. But let's kind of go over the bullish points and kind of see, are they actual bull points or is there actually more there? And it points towards us going back down under 20 again. So the first point, Palantir is growing massively. All right, guys, there is literally every week now a multi-million dollar contract that seems to get signed by Palantir. It just seems like those announcements were coming periodically before, but now it seems like every single week, sometimes three or four times in a week, there's an announcement of another new contract out there that Palantir just gained, and that's not stopping. That seems to be actually gaining momentum the other way, which gives credence to the narrative that it's absolutely basically growing big time, growing massively. The growth is accelerating. And let me be very clear. I have told you guys before, I believe it is going to be a complete and absolute growth beast. But I always caveat that with not yet, guys. We just aren't there yet. Remember, management guided to 20% growth this year. And even if I give it 30%, I go ahead and just, you know, bump it up to there, that 30%, which is kind of what Alex kind of gave us as a long-term growth rate a long time ago. We haven't seen that yet in the earnings, but let's just say I go bullish, really bullish there and go out to 30%. Right now, when I look at it from a valuation perspective, it's still overvalued whenever I look at that. And that's before we ever get to those $40 marks or $55 marks, or even some of the higher marks than that, that some folks have out there as targets for the end of the year. So just seeing all these new contracts and seeing everything grow like gangbusters, unfortunately is not necessarily enough to push us up over that $40 mark, much less the $55 mark or so, at least not yet. But we are up 25% in just over a month and our buys on Palantir, which you can get in real time if you take advantage of one of the biggest discounts ever for my group that expires today, guys. It's going away today. Today's kind of the last day for that where you get absolutely all those buy and sell alerts with all my portfolios across the board. You get to see all of them in real time. Get my complete watch list with price targets. You get five courses for free. You get to use that stock analyzer tool for free. Get your free coaching. Be a part of the best six, seven, and eight figure discord out there. Get those exclusive videos every week. Guys, there is so much involved in the group. Check out the pinned comment down there. See everything that you get and see if our membership's right for you and take advantage of one of the biggest discounts ever from my group before that expires. And again, it expires today, guys. So make sure you jump on it. Number two, Boot camps are exploding. We have seen every quarter, basically every month, every single data point we receive on boot camps is that the demand for them and their ability to fulfill them is absolutely exploding. There is more demand than there is supply there. They cannot get a boot camps out there enough. There is so much demand for them and they are going extremely well by all accounts. But there's one big problem with this bullish narrative right here. I love the narrative, by the way. I, that's exactly what you want. Hey, we can't fulfill fast enough. That's how much demand we have for them. That is exactly what you want. But we're talking about increases in the stock price to those upper, upper levels, that $40, that $55, whatever the case is there. And the problem with that is boot camps, even if somebody goes all the way through, they're all excited, they're all ready to go, we will not see that revenue. And more importantly, the profits hit that bottom line for a long time. The sales process for Palantir takes time. So although this is kind of an explosion year in regards to boot camps, we won't actually, you know, reap the fruits of that labor at least for a year, maybe longer than that, depending upon how the sales cycle goes. That is part of the business model by design. And that's exactly how long it takes in order for a lot of those things to fall into place and to happen. And more importantly, for what matters to us, seeing those numbers hit that bottom line. The unfortunate part is Wall Street is not going to wait that long in order to kind of project out and be willing to give credit for something that's coming 
a year or more into the future there. They're just not going to do it. They're just simply going to look at next quarter and move forward. They don't care about anything else. So as exciting as boot camps are for us, when you keep that long-term vision in mind, they're incredible. Unfortunately, we're talking about stock price today and the stock price today probably won't reflect that because Wall Street's not going to give future credit today in the now. They want to see profits now in the next quarter, maybe the quarter after that, but they're definitely not giving us credit a year out there. So unfortunately, as much as I love the boot camps and I love the progress, the big reward is probably not going to be until next year this time, not necessarily this year this time. And the last bullet point that I hear all the time is Palantir is cheap compared to what it'll be in 2030, 2040 and beyond. Oh, I mean, if we're being honest here, unless you just pick a trash company, everything's going to be cheap compared to what it'll be in 2030. Heck, groceries are going to be cheap right now in 2030 compared to what they are today. So that to me is just kind of one of those useless arguments that I see all the time in kind of the Tesla community as well, where people don't want to deal with the facts today or even in the current year or maybe even next year. They want to think about things that are you know, speculative and hey, by 2030, by 2040, and this could do this and this could do that. And this is on the horizon. And well, we're not even to proof of concept yet, much less a lot of other things like that. For me, when you're having to use that to justify paying a price today by looking out at 2030, that's called speculating. You can't see much past a year or two out in regards to stock price, where it's going to go during that time frame, where fair value is going to be more importantly during that sort of time frame. So although I agree, I can't imagine what the price will be out there at 2030. The fact is any target that I throw out there, regardless of what little pretty spreadsheet I put it into or any other model or anything else like that is 100% a guess and speculation. And so is anybody else's. So for me to say $100 is reasonable is just as likely as somebody who wants to say $500 is reasonable. The fact is we're all just guessing. So, I mean, I, I guess really at that stage, a $20 guess could be uh, true as well because they could see EPS completely bleed off. They could see some sort of an outlaw of some sort that could happen or international law that happens. It doesn't allow Palantir to do what they do right now in its current form. There's all kinds of things that could happen in between now and 2030 that makes something like a $20 price target reasonable and a you know $500 price target reasonable as well. But the fact is it's all speculation and that's absolutely useless in regards to your investing right now today. You have to try to make the best guess in regards to am I overpaying or underpaying for Palantir right now? And more importantly, beyond a year or two, I can't really extrapolate out growth or anything else like that without having to speculate a lot. And at that stage, that's how you get in trouble. That's how you end up paying $400 for Tesla back in 2021. That's how you end up paying $40 per share for Palantir back during that same time frame. That's exactly what gets you in those scenarios right there. And that's exactly what we want to avoid as prudent long-term buy and hold investors. Let me guys give you guys another little nugget right here. Wall Street could care less about 2030. They don't care. Their bonus is not relying on something that happens in 2030. It is relying on something that happens this quarter, maybe by the end of the year. That is the max that Wall Street looks at. I know some of Wall Street folks like to give you the little models. No, that's simply to get clicks to keep their face out there, to give us what we want. So then we tune into the shows, we click on the, you know, the Instagram feeds, they grow their brand, all those sort of things like that. If we did not click on it, they wouldn't even bother with it because they don't care about it. You see it all the time. You name it. Hedge fund manager after hedge fund manager after hedge fund manager goes on CNBC, says one thing, then does the exact opposite. Hey, I see uh, the stock going here by the end of the year. And then they're selling it a week later. Happens all the time because they are worried about their short-term profits. They don't care about 2030 at all. So again, it's one of those deals. Not only is it speculating, Wall Street doesn't care about it. That's why I don't care about it either. So where do I see the stock price going this year? This is why learning valuation is so important. I know you guys hate it. I know I say it all the time. I don't care if you join my group or not. Yes, we teach you exactly how to do that in the course. Yes, you can get coaching on it. Yes, everything is there for you but that doesn't matter. I got it. You can learn it for free right here on YouTube. Punch it right there in the search bar right there on YouTube. Google it. Join somebody else's group that teaches you how to do it, but learn how to do an actual valuation on the stock, not just buy my little spreadsheet here and it'll plug it in and it'll give you the right answer every time. No, you need to learn the mechanics of valuation and understand it intimately because then it will give you a very good sense on when you are overpaying or underpaying for Palantir. That is what saves you from years worth of pain. I'm not saying you're going to time the bottoms or the tops or anything else like that, but you will at least be able to identify, hmm, I'm getting a good deal on the shares. Even if I'm wrong in the short term, over the long run, I'm going to be just fine and vice versa. You'll know, wow, that's really rich. We need to see some earnings to actually back that up. And you don't get caught up in these hype runs, these FOMO runs, 
and all these other things that kind of tend to happen around stocks that we love. And of course, Palantir is one of those stocks. Now, maybe we break and we get up over that $30 mark, but I can be honest with you guys, I would not be buying a single share because I know we are in overvalued territory. Now, not overvalued compared to where I think it'll be in 2030, but overvalued in regards to what I think earnings justifies at its current rate where we're at right now today and vice versa. If it gets down around $20 or so, I'm probably going to start buying just like we did before because I feel like that is undervalued. Now, not crazy undervalued. And if you wanted to argue that, hey, that was actually fair value or maybe even a little bit overvalued. OK, I got it. We haven't really settled on a, on a set multiple for Palantir yet, but at least I know we're on the bottom end of that range there. And obviously, if we get up under 20 at that stage, unless there's something negative in earnings, you know, significant fundamental change there. At that stage, I'll be buying a lot of Palantir stock. And of course, I'm sure the fear will be high and everything else will be high. That's fine. Again, I'm buying now for the future. I'm not worried about all that short-term noise. Now, in regards to where I think it's going at the end of the year, where I think that fair value is, remember, management gave us the growth rates for this year. That is the intent of that is their guidance. Now, sure, if they beat that guidance, absolutely, we could be a little bit richer than that. And that right there would be fair value, sure. But they didn't, they're not going to crazy. They're not going to give us a 20% growth rate and then go to give us a, you know, end up with a 50% growth rate at the end of the year. That's not going to happen, guys. We're not going to see that from Palantir, especially if you've been paying attention to how Alex runs the financials at all. It's not what he's going to do. So I suspect we're going to get that nice growth rate, nice and steady through the end of the year here. Maybe a little bit better, maybe a little bit worse, but I'm guessing if he's going to push it, he's going to push it up to a little bit better, but nothing crazy, not 20 to 50, you know, maybe 20 to 21, 22, whatever the case is there, which puts fair value for me. When I sat down and I analyzed it, $25 at the end of the year, I said that at the beginning of the year this year, based upon his guidance, that's where I could see it going right there. And I see no reason why we won't get there and be able to hold that line by the end of the year. And I understand we're already kind of beyond that now. Totally understand that, but that tells you kind of where my thought process is and kind of what I feel like it's trading at right now in regards to richness. Doesn't mean it can't go higher. Doesn't mean that, you know, people are going to, you know, traders are going to trade it. Absolutely they are, especially if we have a blowout earnings. And man, this thing is definitely poised for something a lot more. But stocks always return back down to fair value at the end. We've seen these type runs before in Palantir and it's come back down or vice versa. It's gotten beaten down and then seems to come on a rocket ship up out of nowhere. But it really wasn't out of nowhere. Simple valuation keeps you from buying the hype runs and instead has you buying it when it's a little bit undervalued. So that mid 20 range is kind of where I see it going by the end of the year. And remember, if you want to see all my buy and sell alerts in real time, you want to learn exactly how to do due diligence on a stock and you want to see my watch list with price targets, you want to be a part of the best six, seven and eight figure discord out there. Use our stock analyzer tool for free. Get your free coaching. Guys, there is so much involved in the membership. Don't miss out. One of the biggest discounts ever for my group is happening right now. So make sure you check out the pinned comment down there and see if a membership's right for you before the sale expires today. And click this video here if you want to see exactly what I'm buying in this market. And click here to see my exact plan for this market. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.